what was the name of the brand? No idea. Exactly. And that's the point, right? All of us that are shopping on Amazon, I've asked this question hundreds of times. It's like 1% of the time can somebody name the brand of the item that they bought. I think people are over indexing on the importance of branding. And as another case in point, I'm going to ask Mina this question. Mina, what was the last item you bought on Amazon? It was like a shampoo. What was the name of the brand? No idea. Exactly. And that's the point, right? All of us that are shopping on Amazon, I've asked this question hundreds of times. It's like 1% of the time can somebody name the brand of the item that they bought. What you do remember though is the shampoo. What kind of shampoo was it, Mina? Like a hair loss. I think it was called like tea gel or something. Uh, but it's essentially yep. like, you know, one of those shampoos that... Uh, has like finasteride or, or minoxidil or something in the shampoo that helps like the hair not fall. And when you went to Amazon, what keyword did you use? I think I used the uh, minoxidil shampoo or hair okay, loss. So, yeah, minoxidil it, shampoo, I think is what I used. So somebody who is technical like Mina would know the technical term, but someone like me who doesn't have hair anymore, I would just type in hair loss shampoo. And so when you scroll down and you look through some of these products, what will stand out is the guy that says hair loss shampoo. So imagine I'm, I'm the casual coming link for a hair loss shampoo. And this is what I see. I'm going to immediately click on this one personally, because that one literally says hair loss shampoo on the packaging. It is what I'm looking for. I'm confident this is what I need. That's what the consumer is doing. And I think a lot of people don't understand this, right? Like that's, that's what people do. They look for what they search when they see what they search. That's what I'm looking for. Click. Guess what his conversion rate is going to be on this keyword. So a thousand of these a month. I guarantee you this guy's conversion rate is higher than most others. As proof of that, they're in organic slot number one, right? <laughs> like just crushing. Okay. So back to beef liver, we could talk color theory, but in supplements, color theory is minor because it's all composites. Most of the time, it's just about readability, right? So if I put up my color guide here and show you readability, if you're going to make a supplement today, this readability chart is crucial to understand. The number one mistake that I see made in supplements is blue on red or red on blue. And that's really hard to read. You'll see an X there. The most common thing that we see in supplements is white on black and black on white. And that's, that's what we are seeing here in supplements, a lot of white text and a lot of black text. And, and that's good. Those are easy to read. If we scroll down to try and find something that was hard to read, forget the font size for a moment, but this one's hard to read. It's too small. Let's see if we can find a bad example. This one's not as good. It's kind of like a greenish on red. So let's see. So I, I can't remember. So foreground colors on the left, background colors on the vertical act or the horizontal axis. So this would be right here, technically okay, but it's hard to read the bias. Not so much, it. right? Because it's also kind of leaning towards orange. So yes, uh, it, and it's not good on orange. So yeah, I wouldn't go with this which color we, combination. Which we see right there. It's, it's a little iffy. I agree with yeah. you there. So yeah, good on red, not as good on orange. Good catch on that. Okay. So as we scroll down, is there any other ones that are harder to read? I would be surprised to find a hard to read one on page one personally, but we did that find one, look, like that. This is a simple one. Yeah. This one, Symbiotica. So it's crazy because you can easily just make liver health plus and whatever's under it, like much larger font, right? It's so easy. Like, and yes. I think so many people, they do their label at their scale and they're like, that's it. And I'm like, dude, increase the font size. No one is coming here and saying, oh, it's, I bought it. It was a font 42 on the Amazon listing. Back. And it's actually a font, you know, 28 when I got the bottle, <laughs> you know, make it bigger. I concur with you. Uh, and, and by the way, here's the next thing to talk about. The capsule count, very easy to make out on Mother Nutrients product right here, 180 capsules. Anybody that doesn't show their capsule count as easy to read as this in supplements, I think you're crazy, right? Like everybody mm -hmm. wants to know how many capsules because this is going to affect price. Like what's my price per pill? Wow, there's 180 capsules compared to somebody else who might only have 60 or And 50 let's point cents. out that is fake. That label yes. is not real. And I think a lot of people are very afraid of including these fake labels, but this is 100%. The bottle will not arrive like this. It's not going to arrive with a little tag that says 180. This was added in, in a 3D render. And, and if we think about that, I think people are afraid of TOS and rules, right? Like, but here's the thing. First of all, I've never personally ever seen a product suspended or yanked from a main image issue. So just let's just get that out of there. Second of all, I've only ever seen an image suppression and a suppression can be cleared in less than 15 minutes. Same. If you load an image and, and it suppresses, which by the way, you can test it, right? So if we take this ASIN right here, we go back to Amazon, we 
type the ASIN in, if this product shows up organically, then we know, which it does, that it's not suppressed. So if you want to load an image and find out if you have a suppression, you can figure this out in 15 minutes and revert it, no problem. Most of the suppressions are robotic. They're not by a human. Nobody is crawling through and trying to enforce main image things like this. So as proof to this, like you could type in a household name like Colgate and on the right, the number one organic listing that says pack of six. When Colgate's box shows up in my house, two things. Number one, doesn't say pack of six on it. Number two, it may or may not even come in this brown box. Exactly. And you know, if you're even even scared, do it at midnight. You're not going to lose sales at midnight. You know, if you're very, very, very paranoid, do it at midnight. If you get suppressed, no harm done. And again, this is super easy to fix and rectify. So we've addressed showing capsule count, numbers good, showing the pills. We dabbled in the color theory. What none of these companies have done at all is show the ingredients. To demonstrate this one, I'm going to show my soaps. And this is a great case example about how you could show your ingredients. Now, when somebody looks at this image, they're probably thinking to themselves, how did I get away with this, right? This is a perfect demonstration of how to lead the witness into clicking on my product. Why? Because I literally showed the ingredients, the raw ingredients. We've got turmeric and honey on the top right. We got apple and cinnamon on the top left, pumpkin spice on the bottom left. And by the way, I made this package this way because those are my favorite smells in the world. I love apple cinnamon. I love turmeric. I love honey. I love pumpkin spice. Though so, I mean, those are just my favorite things. Not a big cranberry fan, but you know, after you pick three, you got to round it out with something that makes sense and cranberry and Thanksgiving pie. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. But these are my favorite scents. So if you show me a cinnamon stick and some apple in the search page, I'm going to buy your product. I just freaking love apple cinnamon. Like I love apple cinnamon oatmeal. I love apple cinnamon candles. If you come into my house, you're going to smell some apple cinnamon in a couple of my rooms. That is like the scent of Stephen Pope right there. You know, that is my it. musk. I um, love it. Showing these ingredients, really, really helpful. You can read the, the scent very easy. You got the apple cinnamon there. You got the pumpkin spice there. We, we have the flavors. Now, another thing that I really like about this image is I got a nice little American made flag in the top. When we did the beef liver search, I don't think we saw a single American. So we typed in beef, was it beef organs? I think it was the search term. Yeah, beef organs. So when we scroll through here, tell me when you see an American flag or some sort of American angle. I don't see a single one. And I bet you every single one of these is made in the country. Maybe some exceptions to that. Yeah, supplements are usually all made in the U.S. So having an American flag would really set you apart here because the capacity to suggest that everybody else is not American made by just saying that you are. And when we look at my image here, it's subtle, but very present, right? It's taking up maybe 10 pixels, but that 10 pixels can be the difference between a click on my product and my competitor, Dr. Squatch, right? So very, very important. The next thing that I really like about this image is I show the product outside of the packaging. And this is what in the supplement conversation, this is the form of like showing the pill, right? So I ran dozens of A-B tests to end up here. And we were, I recommend PicFu. Uh, you, there's a lot of A-B test tools you can use out there to figure this out. But one of the first tests I would run on a main image design is my product versus a competitor's and to see like what shows up there. After I've done that, if I cr crush the competitor, I'm going to feel good about myself. But usually when I run an A-B test against competitors because I suspect I'm not doing so hot and I need to know what to change right? So this is this is something that you could do. Uh, so I'm going to pull up some actual A-B tests that I've run. And and so when I was looking at that mom box from earlier on, the first A-B test I ran was me versus the competitor. And they beat me 60 to 40, right? So there's a mom box on the right. Here's my box on the left, 60, 40. So I knew I had some work, right? So I started to get to work uh, and I ran some more tests. So then I was like, okay, cool. Should I have the box zoomed in or zoomed out? 52, 48. Inconclusive. I don't know. So let's go back to the drawing board. Let's run some more tests. And you can see a bunch of random tests we've run in here. Is, you know, sometimes I let it sit for a couple of days while I'm trying to like mull it over and think it over, uh, running tests on all kinds of accounts. See, there's one more test in here I want to look for. Well, let's go to the soap. On the soap here, I wanted to know, should I show the product in a stack or in a plus sign? And without a doubt, 6634. That's a very big spread, right? Yeah. yeah. And then probably 
probably adding the ingredients like you did the cedar wood, the you know nog, the eucalyptus, and the sandalwood. That would even take it a step further, I bet. We're going to get to some of those tests over time. I wasn't that clever when I first started this out. Here is an example of how not to run an A-B test. Here is, here is a bad test. There are three questions in this test, and there are more than one variations. Based on the image, which product would you rather buy? That alone should have been the test. For those that picked the second option, if the first option had the wrapping with the name of each soap, would that change anything? Second question. Or is no label with the name preferable? Third question. Whenever you run an A-B test, one question, one variable. Don't mess this up because we got yep. data that said the one on the right was better. But guess what? When you fix the test, uh, 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 <laughs> you get different results, right? So this was my old school soaps, my artisan soaps. Before I started, I added the flour as like my first ingredient test. I made the flour more prominent and, but eventually I ended up running more products. Here's a supplement test. Let's go to the supplement test. I love that. the evolution of your soap packaging. And I think this is an amazing demonstration of like people overthink what they need to start, but you created a very successful brand literally soap like shrink wrapped with a sticker a white sticker on it and a yes. box and round, then, and then later boxing, on you will. yeah later on it became way more sophisticated and a lot better but like you still made a, a lot of money with that initial packaging here's a great example of an a b test just switching the colors around right consumers clearly liked having more blue than having white and the most important thing that you see on screen here everything is the same except the color right the pills are in the same location if you want to have a really good test, you need to change one single variable. And this one was color to demonstrate that. We ran another one just to validate like, hey, is it really the color? Yes, it was. So you can you can run validation tests. Clearly blue packaging versus white was was winning over consumers. And there's all kinds of demographics targeting. So I, you know, we dabbled in the A-B test. That's enough to kind of demonstrate like what you would do after you come up with an idea. But here, you know, five A-B tests later, two years later, this is where I ended up. I wanted to show the soap. I wanted to show the ingredients. I wanted to show the American made, the 100% organic, as much information as I could in the main image, I slammed it in. So as we kind of wrap this up, text is for robots, images are for people. The main image has the largest impact for CTR within your control that will cost you the least amount of effort and you can make lots of changes. Uh, so we showed supplements, we showed soaps, we showed all kinds of, you know, we even demonstrated a shampoo briefly. There are many things that you can do to improve this, but when you go back to the search page, this is where you win today on Amazon in 2024. Because if you think people are going to go to your listing and look at your secondary images to make their buying decision, ha ha ha, that's not happening, right? If there's 100,000 people searching for beef, Oregon, 90,000 of them aren't going to scroll past the third row, right? And so that means you have seconds to get them to click on my item, right? If you don't have the word beef, Oregon, super large, you don't have a fraction of a chance of getting the click when somebody types into search beef organ, right? Everybody's doing that. So to level up from there, it's about color. It's about the pill. It's about the text. It's about the number. If you want to get me this click, these are the things you got to do. So I'll pause there. Ask me anything about our CTR and main image upgrades today. I, I think this was perfect. I would say let's summarize it in a step-by-step -step format. So step number one, identify the main keyword on your products, right? Step number two, load up the search results. Step number three, look at the competitors and see what grabs your eye. And then probably step number four is take the competitors and then take your product, take it to pick food and see what people are saying, who they're clicking on and why. And then step number five, identify those gaps, bigger text on the label, bigger numbers, the actual product, what it looks like, different angles, et cetera. And then iterate until you know you get the best results start with a 3d render right so like you can manipulate the 3d render in so many ways before you actually need to upgrade your packaging like you did with age of sage like you were able to go so far without needing to like invest in new packaging so i would say do that and then you know also use the same strategy to invest in new packaging and and this was two years after i launched my original soap like this is the age of sage product today but it took a long time to get here right you know i generated hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales with with old school packaging, artisan packaging. Now, the funny thing is, Mina, is after I did all of this, the old school packaging, two top SKUs, did just as many sales as the two top SKUs with the new packaging. And so it's the same item with different packaging, 
ironically, this cost me less to build versus the artisan because of the labor it was taking to wrap the product. So I kept both permanently, right? So even if you go through iterated uh, packaging, there's there's a takeaway here. You can get click-through rate that's higher with people who are looking for something more professional on the right while still maintaining the old school artisan handcraft type of view because now I've got two customer sets. I doubled my sales with the same product packaged two ways. And the same thing can be done in supplements. The same thing can be done in many other different products. You got a spray that's good for your car. Oh, is it good for carpets too? Well, cool. You don't want to use a car spray on your car carpet, right? Well, that's two different products. Now you got two different listings. So hopefully that gives somebody an additional bonus takeaway that you can double your sales by just updating packaging and keeping both products live. I love it. All right, guys, if you want to check out more videos from Stephen Pope, you know, I'm going to uh, link one of his videos here. He obviously has an incredible YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to both of us because we're both putting on, I think, the most amount of value in the industry when it comes to YouTube. And I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to crush it on Amazon, subscribe to my Amazon guy and let's make it happen together because it's not me against you. It's all of us against Amazon. Thank <music> you.